Hello everyone, welcome to Explorer Electronics. In the previous video, we have seen AC voltage applied to the inductor and capacitor separately and how to take the current and voltages leading and lagging cases. So in this video, I have explained the two different analysis when AC voltage applied to capacitor and pure inductor. So this is the code word which we can follow to remember current is leading in capacitor and in inductor we say voltage is leading so once we say current is leading obviously voltage will be lagging in inductor voltage is leading and current is lagging behind so this we have seen in the previous video in this video let us get into the series rlc circuit and let us analyze that and how to write the phasor diagrams and what are all the vi signals we can get let us see So first let me write the circuit for RLC by taking the resistor and inductor and capacitor which they are connected in series and they are provided with an AC signal. So this is the AC signal and now it becomes the RLC series circuit. So in this circuit as we know if these three components connected in series the current flowing through the all the three devices is I and current is same flowing in R as well as L as well as in C. Since it is a series current, the same current will flow. So we can write it as I is equal to I m sin omega t is the current flowing through these three devices. Or we can say the same current flowing through R is flowing through L the same current flowing through C. So by this statement we can also assume while writing the phasor diagram we can take this current I direction as the common thing like this and vertically I am going to consider the voltage phases. So this is what the current phase is and here I am going to take voltages. Since current R and voltage in resistor are in phase means if we consider a single resistor whatever the current flowing through the resistor i if it is in this direction voltage is also fall on the same direction so the phasor diagram for the resistor is concerned this is current and somewhere here we can write it as vr so in resistor we can say current and voltage are in phase so there is no phase difference between these two they are falling under the same axis. Now coming to the inductor. As I already said, in inductor and capacitor, current and voltages are not in phase. So in inductor and capacitor, current and voltages are not in phase. So we say not in phase. So how actually the voltage and currents are then? So if you write the voltage with respect to this current for an inductor, we will be getting the phase are like this, this is VL and why because VL and I are 90 degree phase shifted. So in inductor we say voltage leads and current lags. That's why the voltage is exactly 90 degree phase shifted with respect to current and it is leading we are writing as a positive value like this compared to I. So with respect to the capacitor is concerned again the capacitor voltage is not in phase with current and capacitor voltage phasor if you write we can write like this this is vc this point is vc and in the capacitor current is leading the voltage means voltage is lagging behind current is leading so if you write the phasors it look like this this is vl this is vr this is vc so all these three in different directions with respect to i so current and voltage with respect to R is in the same axis. Current and voltage with respect to L is in 90 degree phase shift. Similarly current and voltage with respect to the capacitor will be with 90 degree phase shifted. So now let us write the triangle for this voltage triangle. So voltage triangle if you write for this by taking this as VR and here we will be having VL here we will be having VC. So 
So how to write the consolidated phasor diagram for this? So it is difficult. So we need to consider three cases. In the first case, we need to assume the reactants. So XL is greater than XE. This is the first condition I am going to consider. If XL is greater than XE, we can say VL, we are assuming that it is more than VC. Now we can write the triangle by taking this condition. Later, let us consider XL less than XC and then one more condition XL equal to, the, equal to XC. So now for this condition, we can say here this VL and this VC point if we take, VL is more than VC we are telling. So if we subtract VL and VC, since it is in the same axis, the voltage we are going to get over here. This is VL minus VC. So this is the point where we are going to get VL minus VC since VL is greater than VC. So this is the phasor vector we are going to get. So if you take this into consideration and we are into consideration, this line or this phasor is representing the total voltage V. So this is the origin. So we can write in the other way as by taking this as VR. I am projecting this vertical line from this end like this. This is my VL minus VC and I am going to join this as V. Now we can find V by applying the Pythagoras theorem to this particular right angle triangle and this is my phi. So the expression for V is V is equal to square root of VR square. This is VR and this is VL minus VC and this is V. I am finding what is V. V is equal to V square plus VL minus VC is the other term square. So if you apply Pythagoras theorem and if you uh, find out V, this is the expression we are going to get. So if you write the power factor angle that is phi, if you write phi here, it becomes as we know tan inverse of this VL minus VC, VL minus VC opposite side divided by the adjacent side that is VR. This is what with respect to the voltage triangle is concerned. Similarly, we can also write the power factor that is cos phi as it becomes VR divided by V. We can also write the impedance triangle by considering the impedance. Similarly, it is as the voltage triangle is in the X axis we will be getting R parameter that is R here. Again here we are going to get XL minus XC. This is XL minus XC up to here and here we are going to get the resultant Z. This is the total impedance of the circuit. If you write the expression for Z, it is again Z is equal to under the root R square plus XL minus XC whole square. Again, if you write the power factor in terms of the impedance, it is phi is equal to tan inverse of XL minus XC divided by R. So also we can express cos phi that is power factor in terms of the impedance that is R divided by Z. So we can also write the power triangle in the same way by taking the upper end power as hypotenuse and this uh, adjacent side becomes the real power and QL minus QC is the reactive power over here. So in the same way we can also write the power triangle. So this becomes L minus QC and this is yes, this is P. So and then this is Q. We can also write yes is equal to the apparent power is equal to under the root P square plus Q square. Here Q is again QL minus QC. And similarly we can write cos phi as P divided by S. So this is the analysis for XL greater than XC. 
in the similar way we can do for xl less than xc also let us see that suppose if we consider xl is less than xc if xl is less than xc means what obviously the voltage at the inductor is assuming that less than voltage of the capacitor so now if you write so if you write the phasor diagram here in the y axis by taking the voltages and in x axis i am assuming again this is the common current and here some way here it is vl here it is vc and we are assuming that vl is less than vc so we are going to get some way here the point that is vl sorry vc minus vl since vc is more than vl so for this if we write again the voltage triangle now we are going to get this is my vr some way here so in the x axis we are going to get vr again and the resultant voltage among the capacitor and inductor this i am going to project this i am going to project this side so it is vc minus vl and if i am going to connect this this becomes the hypotenuse so this is my total v so again if you write the expression for v it is this is vr this is vc minus vl so that is again vr this is vr square plus vc minus vl whole square so similarly we can also write the impedance triangle this becomes r so this is xc minus xl and this is the resultant z so z can be written as this is r square plus xc xc minus xl square this is the impedance triangle similarly we can also write the power triangle we can also write the expression for power factor and uh, power factor angle and we have one more case this is the second case by assuming xl is less than xc the third case we can take suppose if xl equal to xc in this case vl becomes equal to vc again if you write the phasor diagram for that by taking voltage in y axis again in x axis i am going to take the current i again here i am going to get vr since these two are in phase here i am going to get vl and here i am going to get this point is vc and now we are assuming that vl is equal to vc since these two are equal and we need to take the voltage of vl and vc into consideration the voltage becomes zero if you subtract this from this it becomes zero and the total voltage v will be equal to vr and similarly if we write z that is impedance of the total circuit so that here xl and xc are equal the term becomes zero and finally z will be equal to r so in this case the total impedance of the circuit will be only be depending on the resistor value r